Hey, thanks for the for the introduction. Now let's, let's see whether the, the full screen mode works or not. Okay. All right. So let's begin. So yeah. So I'm uh, the I'm talking about a bit the uh, EFT amplitude and uh, something about the dispersion relations. So let's begin with uh, with the EFT and uh, so I, I know it's I think. Uh, we all know uh, the EFT is a very uh, effective and convenient tool of public parameterizing the infrared effect of uh, of new physics. So, and uh, for example, and uh, uh, you know the, the the EFT that we all know and uh, familiar with uh, that is uh, SMAFT, right? So I think uh, Will told me that a requirement for this uh, seminar is uh, in the first few slides you have to say what EFT you are using. So I think. Uh, uh, I'm using this EFT. Okay, I, I don't think I need to say too much more. I assume it's, it's very familiar to to most of people here. And uh, uh, coming with EFT, there's this whole machinery. Again, it's uh, familiar. That is, uh, you know, there's a connection the way to connect it to to any UE completion by a matching and uh, an RGE running. Okay. So. At the same time, I think in recent years, there are uh, lots of work uh, established, uh, you know, following the amplitude approach that uh, established that it's uh, alternative representation, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> representing the same kind of uh, uh, physics. And uh, it has a more direct connection with uh, uh, experimental observables because they're dealing with uh, directly with the, the S matrix uh, elements. And uh, the connection between this approach to UV physics, uh, one way is to through this uh, uh, so-called dispersion relation. And uh, this, uh, this follows some very general principles of quantum field theory, such as uh, locality, unitarity, and uh, analyticity. And, uh, and uh, it leads to uh, things like uh, uh, sum rules, uh, positivity bonds, and so on. It give you a, as we will see uh, in some detail later, and it will give you a, a interesting angle, interesting way of uh, uh, connecting the infrared measurement and uh, and the UV completion. So obviously, this uh, this is a uh, you know uh, uh, equivalent. Uh, no, so so it contains the same information as the EFT uh, matching and running, as we'll see in, in more detail later. So in this talk. I will uh, focus on uh, SMAFT. I will derive the, the sum rules for dimension six operators of SMAFT. Again, so this is the EFT I'm focusing on and, uh, and explore the consequences. I will explore some of the, uh, <clears throat> discuss some aspects of these sum rules, explore their consequences. And the mostly for this work, I will work in the limit of the, <clears throat> the <clears throat> energy of the experiment. It's a, a much above the weak scale, so I will treat the, the standard model particles <clears throat> effectively as a, as massless. Okay, so let's begin. So uh, for some rules, uh, we're focusing on this uh, so-called elastic amplitude. Uh, we take the the forward limit of an amplitude from uh, uh, you know scattering was a b and goes to you know, AB goes to AB, A and B are two uh, particles. And we look at the, their forward limit and the elastic amplitude, meaning that the, the, the incoming, you know, incoming particle is, has the, is the same as the, the, the outgoing particle. And uh, we will uh, expand. So, so this is what this will we call the A tilde S. This is a, uh, because we set T equals zero. And uh, and because s t s s plus t plus u is zero, so you know, the, the only real uh, the only actual variable is s, and we'll expand this uh, uh, amplitude of s. Uh, you know, this is just a Taylor expansion around the some scale. You can view this scale as the, for example, the uh, energy of the experiment. For example, the typical energy where the coupling are, are measured. For example, and uh, you know. Assuming the the the, the amplitude is a, is a analytic, yeah. So you have this uh, this formula to to derive this uh, this uh, describe this uh, this coefficient. Then the next step is uh, we will deform the contour, 
yeah, so I, you know, I have a counter in the backup slide if, if you wanted to look at it. It's a standard way of deforming this counter to the, to the, you know, and you have to take in care, take, take care of the, the, some of the low energy poles and the, the branch cuts. So once you do that, and uh, also using the, the crossing relation that uh, relating the, the scattering amplitude A, B, and, the, and the, 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 the scattering amplitude was uh, A, B bar. B bar is the antiparticle of B. Sorry, I should, you know, here. And they're relating them together and, uh, and they cast them all in the, as, a, as an integral along the branch cut in the positive S. So, so after you've done all this, you can write this uh, 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 coefficient in, the, in this way. Okay, and the plus a, a boundary term, which is coming from the integration over the, the counter at infinity. We'll have a few more words to say about uh, this, uh, this boundary term. So again, so in this in this uh, uh, work, we will take uh, m is uh, roughly on the order of uh, standard model particle mass, which will eventually will take to zero, and the uh, mu will be the uh, energy of uh, uh, the experiment, and the uh, lambda will be the scale of the new physics. Okay. So yeah, so this is just uh, the, the same formula we copied here in particular for dimension six operator. So sorry, uh, yeah, for dimension six operator, uh, it, will, when, when it will contribute to, to this kind of amplitude, right? So once you do the expansion, it will corresponding to a, uh, the amplitude will go like uh, energy square. So we're corresponding to the N equals to one case here. And, uh, and for N equals to one, we can write this, uh, a simplified formula like this. So this is a, already uh, has the form of a summer rule. Okay, so we will see more examples uh, later. Okay, so let's connect uh, with the, the the EFT contribution to with this kind of amplitude. Right. So so the what we the SMAFT uh, Lagrangian is is of this generic form. You know, expand them in terms of uh, you know, dimension six operator, operators, dimension eight operators, and so on. And the, the contribution to endpoint amplitude can be generically written. Okay, this is a very generic statement as, as this. Okay, so the uh, GI here, the GI here is a uh, coupling with dimension I. Okay, so the, the, the ones in the square, square bracket denotes the, the dimension of the objects. And the a n point amplitude is a n. It has a dimension of four minus n. And uh, this is a amplitude with the sub amplitude with the, the coupling strip. You know, because the total dimension has to add up you know, to four minus n, it will uh, it will have this dimension. Okay. All right. So. Now let's think about, uh, uh, in particular, focusing on the four-point amplitude, right? So let's think about what kind of contribution from the Lagrangian, uh, various terms in the Lagrangian can contribute to, to, to this amplitude. Right? So there is a, uh, the first term is a G0, A0, which is a, you know, sort of the standard model contribution with a, with a dimensionless coupling, which is G0. And the, the second term is a, the, if you, you can view this as a, a coming from the one insertion from a, a, a dimension six operator, right? So because dimension six operator comes with a dimension four coupling, right? So it has a coupling of the uh, dimension one over lambda square. And so, um, yeah, and uh, similarly, the, the next term can be viewed as coming from a dimension eight operator. And uh, so you know, then, then, then already from this, we see that uh, uh, at, at least at the tree level, the, the, this term has the form of, uh, you know, the, the amplitude has the form of this coming from a, a four point contact interaction. Okay, so namely, if you, if you write out, um, if you, if you, you know, if you, if you write out the momentum dependence, so, so, so A2, you know, should be something like uh, lambda is two square plus, uh, you know, uh, let me just generically write it as a P square. Okay, so some uh, sorry, P to the fourth. Yeah. 
So, um, so the momentum dependence are all upstairs. This is what I mean, what we mean by contact interaction. And uh, it turns out, uh, so, so, so this is just for a simple case of a, a simple insertion, but it turns out that this is actually a, a general statement. The general statement is that if you consider all the uh, elastic uh, helicity amplitude in SMAFT, their contribution <clears throat> from, from a dimension six operators, uh, the contribution, uh, sorry, let me, the, the four point, let me, let me say that sentence again. So the four point, four point uh, uh, amplitude, uh, four uh, the elastic amplitude in the uh, elastic helicity amplitude, there are, they are all of the form of, uh, of this kind of, uh, they're all of this form, the four point contact interaction form. Okay, so this is certainly the case for the for the uh, for the simple case of a, of a one insertion of a dimension six operators. Okay, so um, at the same time, you 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 may wonder there could be other things that are contributing to the four point uh, elastic amplitude from SMAT. For example, we can make a four point interaction with a two three point interaction, right? So the uh, Again, the, a three-point amplitude can be written in a, in a similar uh, in a similar form, right? Generic form like this, and um, <clears throat> sorry, and you can sew two of these together, for example, to make a four-point amplitude, right? So you can put a one. So again, the first term can be viewed as a, as a standard model, um, three-point amplitude. With a, with a dimensionless coupling, the second term will be uh, coming from the, the, the EFT dimension six operator. So you can obviously form a four point amplitude with, with, the, with this form. So for, for example, there are the, these are the two uh, you know, obvious uh, you know, candidates. They can, they can give rise to you know, diagrams like this, right? diagrams like this. And, uh, and you can make, a, make this into elastic scattering amplitude. Right? So let's see. That. Time is this direction, so you can make uh, elastic scatterings, for example, with with this kind of amplitude. And uh, um, at the same time, though, if you look at the, the helicity structure of the of this amplitude, the, these are only giving you amplitude of the form of plus 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 or all plus or all minus. Okay, and uh, so this is in the all in and all out convention. So it's you know the momentum is all coming in or all going out. Okay, so, but in order for this to be elastic uh, in the in-out convention, right? So, so this, this will be corresponding to the in-out convention. I have plus in and then uh, minus out. Or have a, you know, uh, I have a plus in minus out. So this in the, so one of this will be minus in the in-out the in -out convention, right? So, so this will not be uh, elastic, for example. So, so these operators cannot uh, giving you uh, elastic, a scattering um, in you know from a, for this form okay so there are more possible ways to 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 put them together you know the one another another way is is to coming from uh, coming from this set of operators okay and in particular this set operator gives you a uh, couplings with a uh, you know two scalars with one vector form three point uh, couplings, and uh, however, these couplings has a p square from the vertex. Okay, and it actually cancels the p square in the propagator here. Okay, so therefore, they're, they're, these are still of the four point contact interactions. Okay, so so basically, the conclusion we are drawing here is that if you think about the uh, uh, elastic four point inter, uh, <clears throat> scattering uh, of uh, helicity amplitude of that. And uh, <clears throat> the only uh, such contribution from dimension six operators in SMAFT are of the contact form. Okay, so again, so this contact form, as we already said, that they give you uh, already a very, very strong constraint for the amplitude, right? So basically the amplitude has to be, you know, uh, the, the amplitude has to be of the form of uh, you know p square over lambda square, so there has to be 
you know, energy square. Uh, and all the all the momentum dependence has to be upstairs, and the the helicity amplitude also subject to 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 a bunch of uh, so called little group scaling rules that, that tells you that uh, you know <clears throat> basically how many angle and square bracket you 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 are allowed to have on the on the numer numerator. Given all these uh, this constraint, you can already you can fix <clears throat> the all possible forms of the four point uh, elastic amplitude, you know, coming from uh, uh, dimension six uh, operators. So basically they, you know, for the all scalar amplitude, you know, there's no, no spin structure and so on. There are, these are only um, functions of Mendelstein variables. And, uh, but for the uh, uh, scalar and the fermion scattering, I know these, uh, you know, all, all, all fermion, fermion scattering, these kind of, uh, 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 elastic amplitude, you there uh, the the rules I mentioned above are basically fixed the, them to be this form, and uh, for the scattering involving vectors, uh, you we simply cannot write down a, a elastic amplitude. Okay, this means that the, uh, the those amplitude don't contribute to, to don't have a uh, those elastic amplitude don't have a contribution from dimension six operators in SMAT. Okay, so there is a similar argument you can make for dimension eight operators, but I, I don't want to go in. We, I don't want to go into detail there. And uh, you can also show that you know under fairly general conditions that the the forward limit of this uh, this amplitude is of this form. Okay, it's basically coming from the fact that in the forward limit the, the amplitude is invariant. Under under this uh, little group uh, scaling. Okay, so these are the two facts. These are the facts that we're going to use later. Okay, so all right. So we begin with the the the, the scalar uh, amplitude. Okay, so the all scalar amplitude. So the 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 the, the, the scalar degree freedom in SMAFT is is a Higgs and uh, and the Goldstone bosons. Right. So so we consider their scattering. So uh, there are, you know, then you have to you have to take into account uh, the, the 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 independent ways of uh, <clears throat> contracting the SU two indices and uh, and uh, how many uh, this give you a counting of uh, how many independent uh, um, amplitude are there. Okay, it turns out that the ones you you can you can do this uh, more carefully, and the, the the so we did it in our paper and the. the there are there are two of these independent amplitude. One of them is uh, uh, basically you you have a oops sorry yeah. one of them is a uh, um, sorry not very good at this um, one of them is the the, the case where the, you you don't have um, uh, yeah, you you have you have one of these indices can be different. The other one is uh, is basically a, a, a no, not get started. Okay, the other one is a uh, is is basically the um, the the symmetrized version of this with all the indices are the same. Okay, so in the forward limit, you know, uh, u is minus s and t is zero, and the, you you see that this actually gives you two, you know, these two elastic amplitude will give you, uh, uh, it will be proportional to two of the combinations of these Cs, these coefficients. And these coefficients are actually, basically you can compute it by using the, using the EFT operators, right? You can, you can compute what the, what kind of, a, what the EFT operators contributing to these coefficients and, and the, each of this uh, uh, elastic amplitude basically will give you a sum rule on those uh, uh, contributing operators, okay, as we'll see. Yeah, in fact, we can see it here. So we can consider uh, these two, for example, the scattering uh, scalar uh, sc scattering amplitude, right? Either you five plus, five minus goes to five plus, five minus, or five plus, five zero goes to five plus, five zero. And they receive a contribution from, uh, from these two uh, SMAFT operators. And uh, yeah, so, so from these two operators, 
and uh, translating them, you can you uh, you can you can look at the 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 formula in the previous page. They translate to this uh, this uh, this coefficient being these combinations of uh, of the Wilson coefficients of the EFT operator, and uh, they leads to the the following. You know, using the uh, our formula earlier for writing down a a sum rule from the the, the elastic scattering amplitude, uh, you you have these for two sum rules. I think the the first one, for example, is uh, has been noticed uh, before, has been written down before in the in the in the limit where C T equals to, to zero. Right. So, but there there is also this second one. Contributing to the basically, this is the oblique parameter operator, T parameter operator. Okay. So you can do a, a similar uh, exercise with uh, with the Higgs fermion uh, scattering. Right. So so these are the operators contributing to to the Higgs fermion scattering, and uh, and uh, you can consider, for example. Um, the the scattering between uh, between U L and the phi zero, right? It gives you uh, you know uh, it receives the contribution coming from uh, a combination of these two operators, right? So uh, and uh, so H Q and H Q prime, which are the, these two operators, and it gives you a sum rule of uh, these, right? So the the and uh, and so on. Okay, so you can you can go through the the, the list of uh, of uh, you know you you left you right and uh, and 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 so on, and the d right and give you uh, this list of sum rules. There is a uh, actually a uh, similar ones. If you you can also consider the sum rules that uh, uh, involving fermion uh, involving left counts and uh, and the Higgs and uh, they give you. Uh, they give you a, a set of sum rules, basically constraining the Wilson coefficient of of, of these operators uh, up there. Okay. And uh, there are also four fermion interactions, right? So, so the you know remember we only have three uh, kinds of amplitude that can give us elastic amplitude uh, based on our earlier classification. There are the four four scalar, which we did with the Higgs uh, Goldstone and the, the, the scalar uh, fermion, which we just did. And there's also the four fermion interactions. And, uh, oops. Yeah, so um, they are, but there are also four fermion sum rules and, and there are actually 20 of them. Let me not write all of them down. So just give you, you know, a, a simple example. For example, I, we can have four right-handed electrons and the, you can consider the uh, uh, scattering with er er, and uh, and uh, you know this gives you a sum rule uh, like this. Okay, so so this is basically yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll 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 talk more about the the the, the implications of these sum rules later. Okay, this is basically concludes the, the derivation of the sum rules. Okay, we you know basically that the basic argument is that the, from uh, argument of scattering amplitude you first. Uh, 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 classify that, what kind of elastic amplitude you can have. Then you ask yourself, like, how, what kind of uh, uh, SMAFT operators can contribute to those uh, um, uh, operators, and then you derive all the sum rules. Okay, so let me let me go on to comment certain aspects of these sum rules. Right, so we are so far we are contributing. Uh, we, we are sort of focusing on the. Uh, uh, so the, the the real valuable part of the sum rules is to give us some uh, some information about the UV completion about new physics, right? But at the same time, right? So basically, uh, if when you calculate a four point amplitude, everything should enter. Everything contributed to that four point amplitude should enter, right? In, for, uh, in, in particular, there are infrared contributions from the standard model. Right? Standard model has a, a small masses uh, particles. So they they can give you low energy poles, for example, and they have massless uh, particle exchanges. There are you know, forward divergences, for example, which will contribute to the, to the boundary term and so on. And the, these, uh, these contributions uh, contributes to, to both sides of, of the sum rule equation. Okay, so they, are, they can, you know, 
I don't know, depends on what, what you want to write on the left hand side or on the right hand side, but they, they contribute both to the scattering amplitude part and the contribute to the to the dispersion relation uh, part of the imaginary that part of that amplitude therefore contributed to the cross section part on the on the right hand side okay so and uh, and also contributed to the boundary boundary terms but i think an important point is that uh, you know these are known physics okay this is the standard model physics with standard model particles right so in principle they can all be uh, computed and subtracted okay then, then you can uh, deal with the the only part of the sum rule that's uh, the, the sum rule the parts of the sum rule that's only relevant for for, for, for new physics okay so this is a, just a comment and boundary term so let's let's uh, you know I have a few words to say about the boundary term so boundary term again is coming from the the contour at the infinity Right. So, and uh, first of all, uh, if we just take the most uh, uh, generic bound on, on how a how fast a cross section can grow as a as a center of mass, there's something called Froissart bound, right? So, this or this this gives you that the the fact that the when uh, n is greater than one. Sorry, did, did this I should have written a more you know it's slightly better formula for this. Okay, and uh, and uh, um, at the at for n greater than one, the um, c n is greater will goes to zero as long as the the the, the scattering amplitude satisfy the the, the first sub bound. Okay, and uh, but the the notice that this is greater than one. Okay, not uh, greater than equal, greater or equals to one. So, so basically, if you consider dimension eight operators where n equals to two or, or higher dimension operators, you can safely ignore the boundary term. For n equals one, which is the uh, dimension six operator, there is indeed some some model dependence. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, so for example, a, 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 a typical example people always uh, mention is that if consider the exchange of a, uh, a t-channel vector. Okay, so the t-channel vector give you an amplitude like this and, uh, and uh, at t, at the, in the forward uh, at t equals zero, it gives you an amplitude that grows with s. Okay, and, uh, but at there, this way, uh, if you, you plug in the, the formula, you, you see that the, the, the boundary term coming from this is, uh, um, is, is, is non-vanishing, okay? So therefore I will say there's some uh, model uh, dependence to this, uh, uh, to, to, to the size of the boundary terms, okay? So um, I think there have been, uh, you know, in practice, you know, for if you, in practice, if you're considering, you know, the, making the connection between the UV physics and the Luan experiment, and if you having in mind some, uh, you know, uh, weakly coupled theory and so on, one can always try to take this into account. Okay, try to classify what kind of low energy resonance is and so on. And uh, and for for heavier ones, you know, they are their effect is uh, even even they even if they can contribute to the boundary term, their effect is is more suppressed. So in practice, this is not a big problem, but it is a. Uh, it is something to keep in mind, you know, before you make a, a, a very general statement about uh, the, the sum rules for dimension six operators. Okay, this is a, there's some model dependence to be keep in mind. Okay, and um, the sum rules, as we uh, I said at the beginning, it gives you a, a fairly interesting. Uh, direct the connection between the precision experiment you can do and the, and the low energy and the direct search you do in the, in the high energy. So schematically it goes like this, right? So, so the, uh, the Delta G here is just uh, imagine some shift of some low energy coupling when you integrate out some new physics, right? So these are proportional to the some uh, uh, Wilson coefficient the, of the operators you obtain that by, your, by integrating out these, uh, these new physics. And uh, but this we just computed is can be related to the to the forward limit. <clears throat> that is, you know, can be limit 
related to the to the to the to the elastic scattering amplitude, and and this by a, a dispersion relation can be related to 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 this uh, uh, combination of cross sections. Okay, so the the and the, these cross sections are the direct production cross sections. Uh, so so these these are, you know, we can imagine these are the the high energy. These are the high energy probes that you can you can you know you can you can try to directly produce these new uh, new particles at high energy colliders, right? So these are the, the their cross section as a function of uh, of central mass energy. Okay, so this is the relation that uh, uh, that we are looking at. Yeah, so uh, schematically, it will give you a plot. Like this, okay. So, so let's again, you know, you might I, I plot the one over mass square, one over mass square on the x, y, and the uh, axis, right? So the the exclusion, um, so so uh, the exclusion limits coming from uh, high energy searches are, you know, either either by the search of this particle or this by this particle. So they 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 rule out uh, regions like basically like this, okay. On the other hand, the the um, Direct measurement, uh, infrared measurement, that, that they depends on a combination of these two uh, uh, cross sections. They rule out a, a, a region, a diagonal region. They 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 rule out. <clears throat> sorry, they they rule out uh, uh, triangle regions. Okay, so they, they rule out the triangle regions like this. Okay, and leaving open a diagonal region where some of the partial some partial cancellations. Uh, between these two cross sections are uh, are possible. Okay. Yeah. So this is also highlight a very important point, right? So there is this uh, this diagonal line, which is uh, marks the exact cancellation between these two uh, between these two um, between these two contributions, right? So the and uh, and uh, and uh, it's possible to impose some symmetry. If it's possible to impose some symmetry, you can guarantee such a such a, a cancellation. Right? So, and this is a, a specific feature of dimension six operator. Their uh, correction to the to the you know to the low energy observables, right? They, they can be. It's possible to in, impose some symmetry to make them cancel. Okay, it's it's not possible for dimension eight operators, for example, right? because in dimension eight operators, everything on the right hand side. Uh, everything on the right hand side of this uh, equality will be positive. So there, that's why there is a, there are, they have a positivity bound. Okay, so therefore they, they, you cannot play against one against each other to, to, to cancel their contribution. Okay, so let's go into this kind of uh, uh, symmetry, like motivated by, by, by this approach a uh, little, uh, little bit further in more detail. Okay, so let's look at uh, um, the amplitude in particular uh, in the forward limit, this is the amplitude we begin with. App apply uh, the, the crossing symmetry, it's related to the amplitude uh, in the U channel by, uh, and, and, and uh, from uh, the switch, the, the one of the particle to its antiparticle. And, uh, <clears throat> and because the relation between uh, U and S is, is related to this amplitude, but because we also uh, proved at the beginning that the, in this limit, the A is proportional to S, okay? And therefore this is negative this, negative of this. So basically the, the, uh, the bottom line of this line is that uh, if I re replace one of the particle with this antiparticle and uh, the, the amplitude should be odd under such a, an operation, on the other hand, if uh, there is also a symmetry, uh, a discrete one in the uh, in the theory that actually exchange a particle with its antiparticle, okay, one of the particle with its antiparticle, then we, we should also have this, right? Com combining these two, we should be able to prove that this is zero, right? This is the symmetry limit where you actually uh, having the amplitude being zero and uh, having, uh, yeah, implying that uh, the the effective field theory contribution 
to this amplitude is zero, if I, and, uh, and the correction of low energy variable uh, vanishes. Okay, so there are two possibilities of implementing such a, such a symmetry. So imagine A and B share a set of quantum numbers, right? I'll, I'll just uh, label those quantum numbers by I. And under those uh, quantum uh, number class, uh, A and B has uh, different charges, sigma A I and the sigma B I respectively. So under that symmetry and the, under the, this particular symmetry, the, the, the quantum number of A doesn't change and the quantum number of B uh, changes to its, uh, its negative itself. So, so this is basically a symmetry that goes from A to A and the B to B bar. If that's a, a symmetry and uh, then if we impose such a symmetry, the amplitude should vanish. Alternatively, you can have another implementation of this symmetry by just uh, instead of switching B, but switching A. Okay, so these are just some uh, 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 familiar examples of the of, of implementation of such a symmetry, right? So this is the Higgs uh, doublet. It's uh, uh, quantum numbers under SU to L and SU to R. Okay, we can you, you can impose a, a symmetry which is a switching the the the, the you know the, the the symmetry we mentioned uh, in the previous page can be implemented by <clears throat> impose a parity that goes from phi plus to phi plus and uh, phi zero to its conjugate. Okay. So it turns out that this is, uh, within the standard model, this is equivalent to the uh, famous uh, well-known custodial symmetry of, uh, you know, associated with the Higgs doublet. Okay. So, but we, we sort of discover, rediscover it in, from a different route. Okay. So the, the just motivated by, by dispersion relations. And uh, there can be also be custodial symmetry on fermions. You know, again, imagine they are they are charged both under SU to L and SU to R. You can either assign their T3 to P0, or you can assign the having the following assignment. So this is the, the so-called custodial symmetry for protecting T to BB bar uh, that, uh, mentioned by, by this paper. Okay, so finally. Uh, you know, we can, you know, talk about the matching and the RGE, right? So this is a, one of the big feature that the, the, the EFT, uh, uh, you know, that allow you to do in a very convenient way. Yeah, so again, EFT matching is, a, this is a standard procedure that can be carried out uh, at the different orders. You can do this at tree level, at the one loop and so on. And uh, there are also many much insights, actually some coming from the helicity amplitude direction, right? So, uh, so what is the, the, the mixing? between the two operators, for example, under RGE running, right? So the one of the operator is renormalized by the other, only if the, the other operator gives a divergent helicity amplitude uh, contribution to the O1, okay? With, and uh, so on. There, there are the, there are the, 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 so this is a relation. There's some uh, connection. You can look at the helicity amplitude and figure out whether these two operator mixes or not. And, uh, I think we do expect the dispersion relation with a uh, with loop amplitude should at least capture some of this information. Okay. So it's uh, of the matching and also the RGU running. Okay. All right. So with all these general comments about uh, what the, these various aspects of uh, of the uh, dispersion relations, and uh, let's look at one more specific uh, uh, example. So this is the, the again, uh, 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 old famous model, so called beautiful mirror. And uh, uh, it, the, the idea is to, to, to introduce, this is introducing a set of new fermions <clears throat> with, the, with the following quantum numbers, right? So the, the three under color the, the, and, the, and the, uh, there is a doublet and the, there's a singlet. The, there, are, there are two doublets, there is a, there's a vector-like singlet as well, okay? So this is, a, and that they mix with the third generation quarks after electroweak symmetry breaking means that they have Yukawa couplings uh, with the third generation quarks. Right. So it's a, it's a fairly simple model. And uh, first of all, we can look at uh, the, the fermion scalar sum rules that we derived earlier. Okay, so in this particular context, 
so the the sum rules will you know but let's consider for example the scattering between left hand uh, top and uh, and uh, and the phi minus they, 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 it depends it gives you a combination like this right so on the and the the other way you can you can think about the scattering between br and the, and the phi minus it gives you a, another sum rule okay at the same time uh, these operators is also related to the the, the shift of the uh, of the uh, left-handed of the left-handed and the right-handed z couplings to to bottom park okay and and this is the motivation of the original motivation to introduce this model is to explain some deviations you know in the in the left data and uh, but you know you, you see that uh, this is the, the direct uh, connection between the low energy measurement and uh, the high energy uh, uh, statement that we we highlighted earlier right so so this means that for example if you want to have a positive shift of uh, uh, <clears throat> of of the left-handed Z to BB bar coupling, you will have to have a uh, negative one-third charge heavy fermion. Okay, and uh, a similar statement can be made by the, for the for the right-handed uh, coupling. Okay, and also you know this uh, you you can directly evaluate the right-hand side. Okay, this is just two to one uh, cross sections. It's a, you know we can we can do it by hand. Okay, so this is uh, easy to to do, and uh, and that uh, evaluating uh, this just give you uh, a, a a shift of the um, um, right-handed and left-handed coupling is proportional to this right-handed coupling proportional to that. Okay, so and uh, this agrees with uh, integrating out heavy fermions at the at the tree level, obviously. So so this this way of using the sum rules is equivalent to EFT matching at the tree level. Okay, and uh, you can also do this at one loop. Okay, you can also try to do this uh, this at one loop, and and the one loop you can consider the scalar scalar, uh, scalar scalar um, uh, elastic scattering, right? You can uh, these are the two diagrams contribute to phi plus phi zero couplings, right? So you can uh, it, that's the left hand side, and on the on the right hand side. You know you can you can evaluate the cross section these two cross sections right so the the to the xbl and the two tlbl and let's give you this okay uh, that's the result and uh, there but there are more one loop diagrams right there are there are also uh this type of diagrams okay so you can also evaluate the right hand side by evaluating the the the, the cross sections uh, down here and also the, the interference term. Right? So in the end, it will give you a form like this. Okay. And the putting this uh, two together, um, again, the, the uh, uh, sorry, so I should say that the, as, as we uh, talked about earlier, our uh, the, the sum rules of the scalars, phi plus phi, phi zero, is related to the, 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 the T parameter. Okay, so you can uh, and uh, and uh, we, we can put these two together, and uh, and uh, this is the prediction of the t parameter in this model. And uh, with uh, with these two uh, given by earlier calculation, okay, and uh, this agree with the with the the, the uh, one loop full calculation in the full series, obviously. So. Okay, so so again, this this procedure reproduces the the, the one loop uh, matching, if you want, in the in the in the in the field, in the usual way of doing it. And uh, in particular, we we can try to look at the, the the log term a little bit further, right? The log term actually uh, captures the the RGE running mixing between the the various operators uh, in this model, right? So so in this model, you can we can integrate out the heavy fermions. Uh, with mass m2 it will generate a, uh, a operator uh, proportional to this right so and but that operator uh, actually mix with the the t parameter operator under rge running and uh, so we, you, you can just take the typical rge equation so so this is the rge equation 
and uh, this gives you uh, uh, this gives you a term like this. Okay, so and uh, agrees with the uh, the result we get from the from the uh, <clears throat> dispersion relation calculation. Okay, so this is basically showing you that the RG effect uh, of the operator mixing is captured by this kind of uh, uh, dispersion relation calculation. Yeah, so we can uh, also uh, ask, uh, you know, this is now a, a specific model, and uh, and uh, what what is the what is the the, the uh, you know prospect and the constraints uh, on the on the uh, couplings in this case the the left-handed C two V bar coupling and the, the and the high energy search. So this is this is the actual plot other than the schematic plot I we showed earlier. So this is a you know, these are the, the, the current LHC bound and their left bound and so on. And the future Z, uh, Z factory will certainly, you know, uh, push this bound uh, much, much better. And the uh, high Lumi LHC will also, you know, do a better job in searching for these, uh, these, uh, these high energy resonances. Okay, so this is a, just, a, just a representation of, of the, the, the kind of plot you will get. That uh, by by using this this kind of approach. Okay, so in the the, the last bit of my talk, I'll I would just uh, like to uh, briefly mention that something that uh, so this is uh, this is all I wanted to say about dimension six operator. I will just briefly mention something that uh, we are doing uh, when I'm finishing up that uh, I'm, I'm thinking about the probing dimension eight operators. So as we said, dimension eight operator has a uh, positivity bound. In principle, that's a that's a uh, sort of a cleaner and a stronger bound on the on the uh, on the size of the operators, right? Based on again general principles on quantum field theory, uh, and and uh, independent of specific UV completions, and they impose a stronger limit on the on the parameter space. There has been a lot of work uh, since the or after the, you know. Uh, after the original work, uh, more, about 15 years ago, there have been many, many work, especially recent years. And I don't have enough room to put all the references here. Okay, so, and uh, uh, it, it could also be a, a much cleaner test of those uh, general properties. You can view this as, uh, uh, you know, again, these general properties includes unitarity, uh, locality, and analyticity of the, of the, of the UV completion. So unfortunately, in practice, you know, these kind of tests is usually uh, sometimes uh, not so uh, straightforward because uh, dimension, you know, if you think about a specific process, right? So in general, it will, uh, you also have a dimension six operators that is unconstrained that will contribute to, to, to that process. Okay, so it, it will be hard to see the effect of dimension eight. It's hard to disentangle those, those, those two, uh, two, two effects. There's not a very clean prediction. Okay. So uh, in our work, we basically we, we wanted to point out there is actually such a channel, which is a special channel where you actually uh, such a, a clean test can be made. Okay, so this is the, uh, the the e plus e minus to gamma gamma channel, and also similarly for for mu plus mu minus to gamma gamma channel. Okay, and uh, um, so the in this channel, and I don't have time to go through the full argument here, but the, the effective from dimension six operator is vanish, is vanishing or highly suppressed. Okay, this is either due to the uh, <clears throat> the particular nature of the, 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 the scattering amplitude. So standard model contribution only has a very specific uh, helicity configuration. The dimension six from, uh, uh, from, uh, from EFT just don't inter interfere with them. And, uh, and uh, you know, even if you can consider other possible contributions, they can come from, for example, a dimension six dipole-like operator, but those operators are very strongly uh, constrained by, by the experiment already. Okay, so so it's argument like that, uh, you know, which we'll present fully, uh, hopefully in a week or so, uh, in our paper that uh, you know tells you that uh, this is a channel we do ex we expect a dimension eight to be the leading channel, and uh, the contribution coming from the interference between standard model and the dimension eight operator, and uh, the positivity bound on that those dimension operators leads leads to a very specific prediction, namely the 
uh, the, the, uh, the actual experimental uh, <coughs> measurement of e plus e minus to gamma gamma should be greater. Oh, I should probably have added equal here. Okay, obviously it can be equal to the standard model. So we should always be greater than or equal to the standard model uh, e plus e minus to gamma gamma. So if you measure it to, to be greater than standard model e plus e minus gamma gamma, you discover new physics. And uh, if you measure them to be less than standard model e plus e minus gamma gamma, you discover some even more interesting new physics. So let's see. Yeah, so this is just the, the, some of the, the figures to be made. It is a preliminary version. We haven't completely finished that yet. And uh, yeah, so these are the, the two uh, set kind of uh, two parameters uh, that uh, parameterize the, 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 the size of the amplitude contributing to the, the from the dimension eight operator that can, uh, the size of the amplitude that contributes to the, to the E plus E minus to gamma gamma. And, uh, and uh, you know, without, uh, without any uh, additional information, it's, it's less constrained. So, so without polarization, it be, it will be constrained along the, this, this diagonal line, basically, this diagonal region. And uh, with some polarization, it will be constrained uh, in the middle. And, uh, but if you impose a uh, positivity bound, and then, uh, you know, then, then you will be living in this corner only. And uh, of course, like uh, any other uh, dimension, uh, higher dimension operator, it's the, the probing power uh, grows with the, with, the, with, the, with the energy of the, of the lepton collider. Okay, so again, uh, <clears throat> the, the paper is coming soon. You know, I, I, there, there's, I don't have time to, to go through the, the, all the details. Okay, so this comes to, to my conclusion of this talk. So I think, uh, you know, uh, very general principles. So these kind of dispersion relation and summaries uh, follows very general uh, principles of quantum field theory. And, uh, and as we showed uh, in, the, in the bulk of this talk, it, it gives you an uh, interesting angle in, in, in connecting infrared precision measurement and the UV completion. And uh, for example, it, it also, also offers you a, an interesting angle to thinking about the imposing symmetries and so on. Okay, I think uh, so far the, uh, <clears throat> this kind of, this set of work is depends on, you know, uh, is focusing on one way of extracting uh, information only that is we're focusing on forward scattering uh, elastic amplitude, elastic helicity amplitude. Okay, so I think, uh, and, uh, and uh, these some rules don't, don't cover all the operators in, in SMAF. Okay, so, and uh, I think it's obviously interesting to investigate whether there are more general lessons can be learned by going beyond uh, uh, you know, the, the simple forward elastic scattering uh, limit. You know, I think uh, the, the recent paper by, by Riemann and Rod is, a, is, a, is an interesting uh, attempt in this direction already. Okay, and, uh, and I also said that it's interesting, you know, there, we have made an attempt to identify some experimental test, uh, you know, unambiguous experimental test, such as the positivity of dimension eight. Okay, that's all, thank you. <clears throat>